Have you ever wanted to eat some funny paper and explore the desert? Not just to impress the other degenerates of Burning Man, but to have a real spiritual experience. To commune with the desert denizens and to absorb the serene beauty of the wasteland? No? Okay, well, have you ever wanted to ponder some ancient heretical heterodoxy? Become engrossed and entranced by the cosmic mysteries and observe the struggles of Sophia and Yalda Balf? No? Well, if your sensibilities are offended by such offers, then perhaps I can tantalize you with this notion. Have you ever thought, what if in Super Mario 64, Princess Toadstool's taste in art was exclusively limited to surrealist painters of the 20th century? And after a little exploration, you in fact come to find that the only paintings you can jump into are the collected works of Yves Tengi. And also, instead of Mario, you're playing as an anthropomorphic crescent moon, wearing a sick biker jacket? And, and then also switch out the 64 for RPG because it's, uh, it's actually one of those. Well, I'm excited to offer you Hylix as a unique gaming experience. Okay, so what is Hylix exactly? Hylix, as I'm sure you remember from your excellent public education, is a word or concept that emerged from the particular beliefs of the Gnostics. The Gnostics being my favorite of the numerous sects for the proto-orthodoxy that congealed from the ether around the first century. A... D uh... C... Uh... Gaming era. The Gnostic beliefs were more or less lost to history until the discovery of new texts in 1945, right around the same time the Surrealist art movement was coming to an end. Why am I mentioning this? Well, the game effortlessly blends elements of Surrealist and abstract art as well as Gnostic influences. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. Under the Gnostic principles, Hylix refers to one of three classification of humans. There are Hylix, the spiritually dead or the sleeping masses, the psychics, those that are awoken to the concept of cosmic mysteries, continually searching for knowledge that can further waken them from their half-sleep, and the pneumatics, the ascended, the blessed few that have achieved gnosis. So, do I have to understand any of that to enjoy this game? Not at all. Hylix is beautiful and interesting by its own merits. So, what is Hylix as a game? Well, in terms of gameplay, Hylix isn't too hard to describe. It's more or less a straightforward RPG. In fact, you could perhaps cynically say that Hylix is just another in a long line of quirky JRPGs and RPGs descending and perhaps stealing from the Mighty Mother series, or Earthbound as it was named for its singular release to English-speaking audiences. It's built in one of the many RPG maker engines available, and more or less plays like a traditional RPG. There's a standard overworld map featuring a variety of more fleshed out areas where you can walk around, interact with things and creatures, as well as do battle with the strange inhabitants of the world. You'll be familiar with most of the basic mechanics if you've played any RPG in the past 30 years. The one outlier to standard gameplay is the complete absence of a leveling system, with character strengthening being linked to death, which I'll discuss later. However, the heart and soul of this game comes from the creativity and approach the game has, rather than the mechanics themselves. Hylix features a distinctive and delightful art style where the environment and characters are digitized clay models. The effort put into the visuals alone is insane. Your typical pre-built RPG game won't even use its own tile sets or sprites, but the creator, Mace Lindroth, has gone far above and beyond with the presentation in Hylix. The artistic vision is incredible, and all the various elements culminate into a cohesive experience. Although I don't use it as a pejorative, as mentioned earlier, Hylix does fall into the category of quirky experience games, in the vein of Yume Nikki, Off, and more recently, and certainly more mainstream, Undertale. Experiential games, in my opinion, have an unfair stigma attached to them. Critics decry them as not real games, walking simulators, or self-indulgent art projects. And yes, those problems do exist, and yes, I do believe Hylix is art. However, I wouldn't call it indulgent at all. Hylix is all about the experiential, and although the game has a start and an end, the game doesn't have a strong narrative, and lets you decide what you find most rewarding about it. It weighs all of the experiences in the game equally and lets you make of it what you will. Even death in Hylix, traditionally a roadblock to progress in your average game, is woven into the story and progression. When you inevitably die, as some of the early sequences are pretty tough, you'll visit the peaceful afterlife where you can chill on the jouch, 
as well as process all of the meat you've collected to toughen yourself up. I can proceed no further without mentioning the music. As you may have noticed by now, it's... unusual. It's an absurdist approach to a soundtrack, and although it might rub some people the wrong way initially, I think it's brilliant. It mixes ambient soundscapes, strange synth, and surf rock, and it does this all while sounding somehow like the composer had never physically laid hands on an instrument before. Believe it or not, this is a compliment. It's an excellent OST that contributes enormously to the feel of the game. For the most part, it's a very relaxed and laid-back soundtrack that somehow matches the bizarre visuals in a way that's difficult to describe with words. The final thing I'd like to mention is how Hylix handles dialogue. It seamlessly blends a world of bizarre visuals and music with equally provocative prose. How does it do this? Well, most of the dialogue in this game is generated spontaneously by what we now refer to as a chatbot that does an excellent job with flowery, almost gothic at times, poetic sounding text. Now, with the advent of ChatGPT and other similar AI nightmares, this may not impress younger viewers much. But in the ancient and archaic days of 2015, natural language processing was still mostly a novelty. Humans as a species had not yet had to contend with the knowledge that in 10 years a machine will be able to synthesize, from a single photo no less, a 10 minute long video of me performing a gymnastic routine while extolling the virtues of fascism and a language I'm not fluent in. Anyway, the meaning you derive in the chats you have with the various NPCs of Hylix is the equivalent of seeing images in static. There's just enough context in the pseudo gibberish of the wasteland inhabitants that a powerful mind, such as my own, will pierce the veil and cobble together a coherent message from the nonsensical rambling. I find that this bizarre method of conveying dialogue mirrors the struggles of the Gnostics. Just as they seek to achieve Gnosis, I too seek to understand the hidden meaning of the secretive and profound Hylix dialogue system. The visuals, OST, and NPC interactions all combine to form an extraordinarily comfy game. The atmosphere of the experience really chills me out and leaves me with a nice vibe. My actual recommendation for best enjoyment of this game is to play at 2am on a quiet night when you can't sleep and you're in a strange transient mood. Just like some foods pair well with each other, so too I think Hylix is best enjoyed paired with the right state of mind. Go play it. And if you like it, guess what? There's Hylix 2. And guess what? Hylix 3 might be coming down the pipeline. Anyway, have fun. <laughs>